Good morning, lovelies. Today we are talking about one of my favorite topics when it comes to world building and history in general, love, sex, and gender. This video is divided into four parts, reproduction, gender and gender roles, sexuality, and romance. We're going to talk about each of them in turn and how they may affect the characters in your science fiction fantasy world as well as your society at large. But before we get started, remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos on science fiction, fantasy, and horror through a feminist lens. If you want to directly support this channel, join the community on Patreon. We've got a Discord server where we geek out over this stuff, you get early access to these videos and other bonus content. That link is in the description. So first things first, reproduction. How a species reproduces will directly impact what, if any, sexual organs they have. Do they do as humans do? Male, female, intersex, mismatched chromosomes, and a dozen other things that you didn't learn in high school biology but do affect how we make kids. Is your fantasy society made up of bird people who lay eggs? Does a third party have to get involved? Maybe it's a species with three sets of reproductive organs, possibly with varying degrees of rarity. Can they only reproduce every few years? years? If so, why? Do they reproduce asexually, like cloning? If so, then you likely only have a species with one set of reproductive organs rather than two or more, and this will directly affect the society's gender and gender expression. Biology is all well and good, but you also want to consider how the pressure to reproduce affects individuals. What happens if someone in your society can't or won't reproduce for whatever reason? Or if someone society deems shouldn't reproduce chooses to do so? A personal example, in my science fiction novel, which I am currently hunting a literary agent for, the society there is very patriarchal and ableist, and emphasizes family and having kids, especially for women. But people with disabilities are discouraged from reproducing because ableism, which causes some issues for my main character, who is autistic. Neurotypical slash able-bodied women who refuse to marry and have kids in favor of, say, starting a career, like my main character's sister, are demonized as not being real women and being selfish. These types of pressures and cultural expectations have a direct impact on how and why your characters act the way they do, especially regarding sexual and romantic relationships. Part 2. Gender and Gender Roles Gender is a social construct separate from reproductive and sexual organs. We in the US have been taught that if you have a vagina, you're a woman, and if you have a penis, you're a man. It's a little more complicated than that. For starters, you got intersex people who are born with a combination of sexual organs. They don't really fall on that neat on those neat little boxes. And then of course you got trans and non-binary people. People who are just like, yeah, no, that when that doctor said it's a girl, they made a mistake. I'm actually a guy. Or screw that, I'm agender or pangender, or I'm fluid or whatever. If you're not under that umbrella, by the way, that is you identify with the gender you're assigned to at birth, you are cisgender. And there's the fact that gender, gender expression, and gender roles are all different across societies and evolve over time. What it means to be a man or be a woman is different now than when it was 20 years ago, as well as the relationship between the two. Acceptance of trans and non-binary people has also ebbed and flowed over the last few centuries. Gender roles specifically can have a major impact on how your society runs and how your characters act on an individual level. Women do one thing, men do another. Women have one set of skills, like knitting, and men have another. Totally irrelevant side note, but I did just make these and they're super soft and I'm really proud of them. Just in time for spring too! Breaking these roles, even if you are cis, comes with its own set of risks. Just think of the struggles that women have gone through just to be able to work in traditionally masculine fields, or vice versa. But you can be creative with both gender and their roles in fantasy and science fiction. If your species has only one sex, or say as many as three, they might have a different number of genders. Maybe that asexual cloning society has a dozen different genders, and they each have their own stereotypical roles. Most fantasy societies tend to use medieval gender roles, women confined to the home while men do literally everything else. It's an easy way to create conflict, especially if you have a character who, say, is a man who wants to pursue the feminine career of seamstress in a strict binary society. But you don't have to do it this way. Brandon Sanderson's The Stormlight Archive uses a very unique system of gender expression. It's very strict and binary, but not in the way that we would expect in an epic fantasy world. Men are expected to do things like fight, farm, lead, etc., but reading and writing are feminine arts. 
None of the men can read, not even the king, which means all the engineers, architects, scholars, advisors, and scientists are women. It also means that they're very codependent on each other. It's mentioned early on that a real military officer is actually a team. You've got the guy who fights and leads, and the woman who takes all the messages, writes everything down, helps him out, keeps things organized, etc. And so they have to rely on each other because their skills are so polarized. You can also have gender, but no gender roles, like a lot of futuristic sci-fi stories. Part 3, Sexuality. The majority of people are going to be sexually attracted to those that they can reproduce with. That's how a species survives. But not always. Now since LGBTQIA plus people exist in real life, a good question to ask is how are different sexualities treated in your science fiction fantasy society, and why? Is it normalized to the point where people don't even blink when two men walk down the street holding hands? Is it criminalized to the point of death? Are some sexualities or gender expressions accepted while others aren't? In ancient Greece, for instance, it was almost expected that men would be bisexual. Even though same-sex marriage wasn't legal, it was perfectly normal for a man to be married to a woman who would have his heirs, but have a male lover. See almost every Greek god. But remember, this is ancient Greece, one of the most women-hated societies to grace the globe, with the exception of Sparta. So while gay sex was almost glorified, lesbian sex was considered very shameful. This is why the people who argued that Artemis was a lesbian and not a romantic asexual, they have to go with a lot of subtext kind of hidden and buried under that Greek mythology because women weren't supposed to have sex with other women. Like, it, it is just shameful. That's just not a thing. A penis must be involved to have sex. Also, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my own group, asexuals. What happens when someone doesn't experience any sexual attraction in your world and or wants nothing to do with it? Is it brushed off as no big deal? Are they stereotyped as filling a certain role or function in society and criticized when they don't do it? Are they forced into sexual relationships anyway? I honestly, I love looking at fantasy and sci-fi worlds from various queer perspectives. Not only is it more inclusive, but it also helps build more layers into your world. And part four, romance. This is separate from sexuality. You can be romantically attracted to someone without being sexually attracted to them, and vice versa. Romance as a whole has been viewed differently throughout history and across societies. For example, the idea of marrying for love is a relatively new concept for some parts of Western society. While working class people have always been able to marry for love, a lot of middle to upper class have had other priorities, namely wealth and family status. Romance was just an added bonus. And of course, there's always the forbidden love trope. Romeo and Juliet, marrying across classes has been historically frowned upon, marrying across certain races or ethnicities has also only recently been accepted. A good question to ask yourself is, what types of romantic love are accepted in your society? What happens when, say, a prince and a peasant fall in love? What happens if someone is aromantic, that is, they don't experience romantic attraction at all? What about same-sex couples? What are the courting rituals like in your world? And what does the ideal marriage look like? And how does this match up with reality? Our ideas of gender, romance, and sex affect us on every level of society, which makes them extremely important to consider when world building. Prioritizing or showing different or brand new shades of the LGBTQ plus community may be a way to set your story apart from the rest. Just be sure not to write the barrier gaze trope. We've We've had enough of that. That's all I've got. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you can, join us on Patreon. That link is in the description. Bye, lovelies.